okay this all will also be recorded just for your information okay so first of all what is lambda before that we would want to know what is infrastructure as a code so basically infrastructure as a code means uh, you can go and create your infrastructure via a code so you can go manage or provision your infra infrastructure instead of a manual process you can do all of that via certain files so in this case you have certain uh, certain things like a configuration files uh, where you can create your infrastructure specification something like what you do in terraform then once we had our tools basic tools like cloud formation we had terraform we had chef we had puppet and yes you can do some things using jenkins also but then we started to think that uh, this is just a dummy deployment so what i mean is i create one infra or one network with few gateways with few network with few instances inside it why don't we go and make it better so how to make it better why creating certain variables so basically now the developer as a developer you don't have to worry and manually go and provision the servers the operating systems and the storage and more important than that you don't have to worry about going and creating the basic environment so let's say you have to go and provision your infrastructure using node.js or using java in that case you need to go and create a server or a virtual machine or an instance or a droplet or an app server depending on whatever cloud provider you are using you go and create that then you go and install the runtime or the environment required to run that particular code base then you go and run that code base alternatively you could have just used a vm i mean the vmware product vm or you could have done this using docker also but then still just to go and work on my infrastructure as a code and to provision my infrastructure do we actually need to go through all this hassle of creating the environments or the runtime the answer is no so aws came up with something known as aws lambda aws lambda basically means you can go and run this code on some particular environment and the code will automatically be deployed and it will do the job or the task what it has to do now i can continue with the theory but it's always interesting to go with the practical things so let's straight away deep dive into lambda itself okay just give me a minute is my voice breaking for everyone else also or is it fine it's, no, it's fine it's fine it's not breaking okay perfect then so man uh, please have a look at your machine okay so going back uh, why not we go and directly create some lambda functions now before i go and create a lambda function some basics about the programming how we are going to go and create our basic program inside lambda now what i like doing is uh, going and creating a basic skeleton program so a skeleton program will only have the functions which are required to go and run that particular program instructions where to get a sample for it for that for that you can go and visit the repository that i have created and like over here this basically if you go over here and you go to your repositories and you go to lambda you will find lambda node over here inside this you will find the basic structure what is required so this is it that's it that's lambda for you done it's as simple as that as this but yes we will have to go and create some basic skeleton structure for instance let's take a base example uh, so i will create a lambda okay by the way i am starting with real time implementations okay so if you want to know more about the theory, theory part either do a self read or wait for in the normal class for me to go through that right now let's straight away jump to the implementation part so uh, assuming a scenario in which i want to start my server after it has stopped okay so let's say auto start a server so this case will actually come up in real time a lot where in let's say my server or my machine or my instance has stopped and once it has stopped i just want to go and start that server again now in ideal scenarios what will happen is the moment your machine or your server stops you get a notification which can be either via email which can be either via sms or a simple 
push notifications on your phone your teams wake uh, your team gets up goes into the servers goes into the console starts it via the console or starts it via cli or start it starts it via your whatever internal tools are there assuming i don't want to do this and i want that this thing should happen automatically so basically the moment my server stopped now why it stopped it can be because of various reasons one yes narmada uh, sorry it was uh, okay fine. i don't know how it fine. happened yeah, so, sorry. Uh, so basically uh, why my server might have stopped pretty interesting actually uh, it can be because maybe the resources are not available maybe my machines are not uh, ready so the volumes are not set so it can be because of this reasons so either of the reasons but in any case i should ideally go and uh, automatically start my servers using lambda rakesh your question i'll answer in the end after i complete lambda only after that i can tell you what's the difference between them okay then. okay uh, so um, basically what i would want to do is i would want to go and start my servers automatically using lambda but what if my lambda itself is unable to start the servers in this case i'll have two scenarios first i will try to start my servers if it is good fine if it is not good or it didn't start i might want to send a notification telling that lambda tried to start the server but it seems it did not work out so a human intervention is required this some people will term it as ai that ai is taking care of it but honestly speaking there is nothing as ai you either train the computer model or you create a model or you create a simple function with if else statement which is taking care of it so what we have established we want to start a server if it starts up good if it doesn't starts up in that case i will send another notification to specific people telling that my server didn't stop let's make it even better the moment my lambda function or my function starts it will first of all send a initial notification that it seems the server is down lambda will now try to start the server then it will start the server then based on whether this operation was successful or not it will either go and send a success notification saying that no human intervention is required the server has been recovered automatically or it will go and send you a error notification that lambda tried to start the function or start the particular instance but it failed because of this reason human intervention is required so this big program we have to create inside our lambda how to do that basically what i always suggest is uh, you can choose your own method but i basically create a basic skeleton structure what i mean is i create a function so let me just save it uh let's call it as auto start dot js because i am working in node js node javascript so i'll be saving it with dot js so i'll say first i'll call a init function now init function can be anything doesn't matter you are free to choose the name yourself right now because you are starting with lambda create a name so that it is in sync with the programming languages that you have used what goes inside the function don't know at the moment i am perfectly fine with it ignore it next function i will send a initial notification or let's call it as initial notification which will do some job what it does i don't know i will think about it later next i will go and send or start my instance here i will go and start my instance which will automatically go and start the instance and based on that it will either go and send the success notification or it will go and send the error notification so this is the lambda script right yes yes so basically a normal basic skeleton inside lambda now in reality it will look something pretty much like this you can take any one of them it will look something like this but i am not going there i am just creating the basic skeleton what goes inside it we will think about it in the next half an hour so this basic script if it is done in that case my lambda function is all set that's it i just have to populate 1 2 3 4 and 5 functions or 
properties from the SDK. That's it. Now, what I might want to do over here is just to make it somewhat better. So initial notification is also sending the notification. Success notification is also sending the notification. Error notification is also sending the notification. So what I might want to do is, let me save it by another name. Let's say auto start uh, one dot js. Here, what I might want to do is, why not remove all of this and just create a function which will be named as send a notification. And inside this, I will decide the type of the message. I will decide the subject of the email and I will decide the message of the email. So what happens now is my big function, which was something over here, which was sending one, two, and three notification now will only be using one function. I will be passing certain parameters inside this function. This is, if you know programming, it would loud, it would be pretty easy. If you don't know, might seem pretty breaking right now, but I will tell you both the ways, this also and this also. Now, let's go back to our Lambda where we have to create the functions and we have to initially start with the notifications. So first part, if at all I have to send any notification inside or out of AWS, or for that sake, even into AWS, I need to use the notification service of AWS. This is first part, okay. By the way, if you are watching the video, just know that we will be touching base on this services here. And it will go in this sequence itself. First, I'll be telling you SNS, then I will be telling you IAM, then I will be going inside Lambda, then I will be telling you Events Bridge, and then I will be telling you CloudWatch. This is how we will go in the today's class because Lambda is a microservice. It will go and invoke other services. What other services? Generally speaking, it is the services in this order. So we will be going through this. So right now I am getting started with my SNS part. Going back, SNS basically is used if in case I have to send any notification into AWS or out of AWS. AWS. More than often, it is always out of AWS. Now, using SNS, I can go and send any notification out. So for that, I need to go and visit the service. There are multiple ways, either go and type SNS inside AWS Search Console, which stands for Simple Notification Service, or just go and search for notification here, which will eventually open up SNS itself for you. So inside SNS, what we do is we create something known as a topic, and that topic will have multiple subscribers, and you will be pushing the message to that topic, which eventually will go to any of the subscribers. If it sounds difficult, let's assume this case. Your office has to send email to 100 people in HR department. Will they send individual emails to HR department? They might, but a smarter way would be, why not create a email group? If you send the message to that email group, it will automatically go to all the 100 people who are added to that particular group. This email group, in AWS is known as SNS, and all those 100 peoples are known as 100 subscribers, okay? So I will go and create a email group or something known as a topic, and I will add multiple subscribers to it. By the time I am done with this third over here, I will also tell you how our Lambda itself can be added as a subscriber, but more on that after half an hour. For now, I am worried about simply sending the emails. One very interesting thing, the SNS pricing, okay? If you think sending emails via AWS SNS is expensive, it is actually not. First million emails are free to use, okay? So you can send one 
million emails for free inside AWS. So have a look over here. First million SNS requests are free. That is why people use SNS a lot. Okay. And after that, it will just charge you 40 rupees for 1 million request. It is that cheap actually. Okay. Fine. So I know that I have to go and create a group or a topic and I have to add multiple subscribers or email addresses inside that particular topic. So what do we do? We go and create a topic. First of all, I will go and create a topic and a standard topic because FIFO is used for queues. Standard is used for our emails over here. I will go and call it, let's say, Lambda hyphen uh, webinar hyphen November 21. Display name, give any display name that you want. Okay. Next, create topic. All of these things will be done in the class. What encryption is, access policy, delivery rates, this and this. Okay, so create topic. Now, once my email group or my topic has been created, the next job for me is to go and create my email subscribers to this. So email subscribers will come up over here inside my subscription. So I go to create subscription and I select my protocol as email and I give my email address over here. If anyone of you wants to see your email address, you can add it up over here so that you will also continue receiving the emails. If not, it is fine. I'll be showing you how the emails look like. Now, just adding an email over here does not mean that the email will start to go to that particular person. They will also have to go and confirm for that particular email address. How does that happen? Let's have a look. Before that, because I got two more, let me add those emails also. So, okay. Only three I'll take now, shiram128 at gmail.com. Next, I will go and add one more. Oh. Anything? Okay, if the emails are good, you should have received an email by now telling that you have to confirm that. Looking at this itself, I can understand that only Sitaram has confirmed on that magical email which you got which was telling that you need to go and confirm. Now for others, how will it actually look like? It will look like something like this. The email subject over here, you will have to go over here and you will have to click on confirm subscription. Only after you go and click on confirm subscriptions, you will start to receive the emails, okay? So in my case, because I also clicked over here, I should, if I refresh the page now, I should also see my confirmation. So this is the unique ID which is created for each one of you. So Rajesh and Ravi is still left. You might want to, if you want to do it, you can go and have a look at it. So now basically, if you go and confirm that, you all should be getting an email automatically from AWS. Now, remember, in this case, after you get the next mail, you might want to go and unsubscribe also. In that case, it will simply say uh, this ID has been deleted, which means you cannot send any more emails to that particular person. Imagine creating a web server, then an email server, then going and 
adding subscription and unsubscribe all of this logic running inside a big app server you doing all of that it becomes difficult to manage or you might even do it people do that actually or imagine aws handling this for you when you are sending less than 1 million emails in one month and that is all for free by the way it is per month it is free forever so if you are sending less than 10 lakh email per month it is actually free so you don't have to worry about subscription unsubscribe how the emails are going rather aws is handling all of that for you now that all of us have already subscribed to, to that topic let's first of all go and do a basic test where we send a message and we will confirm that we indeed got the message And I click on publish message and all of us will receive the messages now. Okay. Now I won't go much into, la, into our SNS because the reason is that we want to focus more on our Lambda as compared to our SNS. Okay. So uh, now anyhow, the email you should have all received also by now. And basically that is just to prove or to show that indeed SNS notifications work. First part. If this part happened now, let's go to the next part, iteration, wherein SNS has been completed. Now we will start with IAM or identity and access management. This part is very important. In fact, anyone going for architect level interviews or preparing yourself for being an architect in AWS or in general, anyone more than eight years of experience people focus more on IAM or identity and access management. This, you call it in your companies as RBAC, maybe role-based authentication, or you might call it as a security credential management, whatever way. It simply means that what service inside your AWS account can be accessed by what person at what time under what conditions. Now, IAM is not a part that we discuss in this class, maybe in two weeks we will do, but in short, IAM roles can be as simple as give Anurag access to EC2 or give Arvind access to EC2 only in Mumbai or give Ashish access to EC2 in Mumbai where he can only start the instances or give Ashutosh access to EC2 in Mumbai where he can start the instance and only these four instances or give Avinash access to EC2 in Mumbai where he can start the EC2 instances and only these two instances and he can only do it if he is opening AWS from this particular IP address. Or finally, give Babu the access to EC2 inside Mumbai only to start this four IP addresses if he is opening it, opening AWS from this IP address. And multi-factor authentication is also successful for him. You see, you can start with iteration one where you want to give all the access and you can make it as complex as you want. You can even create multiple policies like give someone access to Mumbai and not to North Virginia and to Stockholm if his MFA is enabled and so on. IAM and the conditions or the security credentials you create can be complicated as much as you want. That is a big lesson or a class in itself we are not going over there as of now because our things are restricted to lambda itself okay so that we will do in other classes for now we should just pay attention to the part that we have to do inside lambda so going back to lambda how is lambda iam and sns actually coming in together the answer for that is just excuse me So how are these all things actually coming in together? The thing is that if you see 
who can access my EC2 servers? I said any specific person can go and access and you can go and complicate that also as much as you want, which basically means anyone can go and access any service of AWS provided they have the permissions for that. Now, the permissions inside AWS IAM is something known as a policy. So henceforth, when I talk about permission, I won't be using the term permission, rather I will be using the term policy. Policy simply means that who can go and access your resources inside AWS based on what all conditions and whatever conditions you have given all will be handled inside the policy. So when we talk about no complicating the access, only this person should have access for this all access or based on this all conditions, what we mean is we go and complicate the policies. That's it. We go and create the policy and you can go and create the policy in whatever way you want. Make it as complex as you want. The preferred way is using the JSON method or actually there's nothing stopping you. You can go and take help of visual editor also. We in AWS find JSON to be the easier method because JSON is easier to understand. And more than that, the support, if you go inside AWS for any like Stack Overflow, or if you go to server stack, anywhere you go, you will find the policies written in JSON only. So actually it's better if you go and create the policies inside JSON, but uh, you can use Visual Editor also if required. So if I need to give access to anyone, let's say I want to give access to Gopal to go and access EC2. What I will be doing is I will be creating a policy for EC2 and I will be attaching this policy to Gopal. So next time, whenever Gopal tries to log into his AWS account, it will go and see, and he tries to open EC2. First thing that AWS will see is go to Gopal policies and see if any of the policy is matching the operation that he's doing. He's trying to open EC2, right? And he has a policy of EC2 attached. So access will be given. Another example, let's say Harsha is trying to access my S3, but I haven't given Harsha access to S3. In this case, what will happen is Harsha tries to open S3. AWS will go and see, does Harsha have any access for S3? The answer is no. So in that case, Harsha will see something as access denied. Now, this is a question that actually happens a lot is, if I don't give you access for all of the services, why don't I even see it? Let's say Harsha doesn't have access to S3. So that means Harsha should, should not even see S3, no. No, AWS does not work in that way. What happens is I will show you each and everything. Once you click on any of the link over here or you open that particular service inside AWS, next step I will go and check for the policies. And based on if you have the policies or if you don't have the policies, I might show or I might hide that particular service from your reference. Okay, so whether you see it or not doesn't happen the moment you open your AWS console. It happens only after you click on a particular service. Okay, so keep that in mind. It works like that. Now, more on it, we will talk about our STS uh, token service inside AWS. But once we deep dive into IAM, not right now. For now, we are interested more in one thing. What did I say? Who can go and access S3, any specific person? By that logic, what is Lambda doing? Lambda is automatically doing certain jobs for me, isn't it? Lambda will automatically go and send a notification, isn't it? Lambda will automatically go and start my EC2 servers, isn't it? Which means Lambda should somehow have access to my EC2 and SNS. Now, Lambda is not a human being who is inside your AWS console who logs into your AWS with ID and password. Lambda is also a service inside AWS. EC2 and SNS is also a service inside AWS. So in this case, if Lambda needs access to EC2 and SNS, you will have to go and give Lambda the policy for that or the permission for that. Now, how will a service go and access another service? This is also the difference between a user and a role. That's it. A user is an actual human being. 
who is using a id and a password to go and access any service you can go and create or delete the user at any point of time which means they cannot go and log into their aws console on the other hand the role is created for aws service to go and access another aws service have a look at this program over here that we did this part lambda function will have to go and send notifications it will have to go and start the instances lambda should have access to notification or to the servers lambda should have access to sns and ec2 so how will lambda have access to ec2 and sns the answer is we will have to go and create a role for that so how do we create a role pretty self explanatory click on create role over here and give this a name so let's wait so who is going to use this role answer is lambda aws is already telling you that common use cases ec2 and lambda but it can be anything especially people those who will be taking the class for migration remember that you will have to go and choose either migration hub if you are doing migration or if you are migrating your sql servers or your rds instances in that case you will have to go and select rds so rds will have multiple options over here okay for us right now we want to work on lambda so basically lambda will be calling the services on our behalf so we select lambda over here next is the permissions in which case i will go and choose any of the permissions now i want to go and work on what services i want to work on sns isn't it because i want to send the notification so i am giving full access as of now remember this will change once you start creating your own policies like something like here i have created okay how do you know it this is your policy because in this case this logo won't appear that means you have created that policy but for now we want lambda to go and work with sns and ec2 so i will go both for sns as well as ec2 and i will give the full access over here what this is again in our iem class we will do we will go add a tag let's say we are giving a name to it and we are calling it let's call it as lambda hyphen web hyphen i am giving it access to sns and ec2 right okay let's name it lambda webinar so that i will change it also later and let's say create it by and give my name and maybe location important thing iam does not have a location it is a global service why if a user is opening aws in mumbai or in north virginia it doesn't matter from where you are doing it because all of it is going inside one aws account itself so for that reason we don't have anything as location inside our iam but nothing stops you from adding a tag anywhere okay so location let's say mumbai over here and uh let's put a flag as can delete and let's make it true okay and let's also put something else there now tags there is no definite rule for that you can go and create as many tags as you want review and over here you will have to go and give the name of your particular role i am giving it lambda hyphen webinar and i will say lambda role create for webinar one and okay so we will just lock the name over here so that we don't forget that the role name was lambda hyphen webinar lambda hyphen webinar and once you click on create role your lambda role has also been created why am i saying lambda role and not role because this role has been created for lambda so remember this can also only be used by lambda only if you try ec2 using this role that won't appear only in the drop down only this will appear okay so if this part is done sns we understood iem we understood let's finally get started with our lambda so pretty complex so please don't panic because i will be jumping to multiple things while working on this but in crux lambda you will have to go and create something known as a lambda function 
pay attention i said lambda function by the way rakesh that is also your answer pin stock versus lambda in the end i will be telling you more about it but lambda you only create a function that's it you don't create the whole program whole algorithm whole bundle package no just one small function to do one job so what if i have multiple functions no worries either put it inside one lambda function or create multiple lambda function the same way as lambda can call sns the same way lambda can also call another lambda function this by the way is a very hot interview question for the companies in us how does lambda call another function so if you have been paying attention inside my role that i created for lambda i can add another policy also right what lambda so lambda itself can go and access lambda if you don't do it no it won't work remember that lambda needs another policy to access lambda so in this case our role lambda will have three policies one ec2 one sns and one lambda okay fine anyhow going back to our lambda we will just have to go and create a simple lambda function how we click on create function over here and we will go and give this function a name so i am calling this as uh, let's say start ec2 instance okay now remember this rules are there letter number and all this thing have a look at it yourself self explanatory important thing is run time over here i will have to go and choose the base environment which i want my lambda function to work on so this they will ask you in the interviews a lot what are the common the layers or what are the common platforms that are supported inside lambda the answer is dotnet golang java node python and ruby 2.7 why do we select node js another reason is the default one is itself node js only okay so for that reason i select node js 14 you can also go for the older one node js 12 and so on and python 3.6 3.7 3.8 python 2 is not supported as of now because it anyhow the end life cycle of that has happened back in 2020 itself and we are now in 2022 almost okay so uh, i same have same as uh, azure functions uh, exactly the same okay so i can have any of these environments python 367 here comes a question what if i want my own one i don't have python 2 but fine the client says python 2 is not supported but still i want you to create your own lambda function in python 2 what do you do in that case you create something known as a bootstrap okay remember this term more than often just telling the interviewer bootstrap itself should be enough for them so bootstrap basically means i will be creating my ec2 server or either amazon linux 1 or amazon linux 2 inside that i will be having my own runtime installed so let's say i tell you go and create a python 2 program in your laptop what's the problem you will install python 2 you will run the python 2 program same thing here you will go and create a vm or a ec2 instance in amazon linux 2 and you will install that particular runtime inside that machine done so ideally preferred one is this dotnet go java node python or ruby why because lambda is optimized for this particular bootstrap or run runtime or environment whatever you call it so in my case i am choosing node js version 14 finally comes my architecture more about it inside ec2 but uh, in short x86 is the processors what you are using in your laptops right now intel processors arm is what you are using inside your cell phones inside your ipad anyone working on m1 mac is also using arm machines itself arm processors are uh, they generate less heat they have less compute power also this thing is debatable after m1 max in apple but still x86 is what you use in your laptops this one is generally what you use in your phones ipads watches and so on so in my case i am choosing x86 64 but nothing stops you from using this also and now comes the interesting part why we worked on iam why did we go and create a role named as lambda hyphen webinar because my lambda will have to go and work on sns and ec2 right 
how will lambda itself go and work on ac2 and sns for that you will have to go and choose a role now because i have already created my role i will just go and type the name of my role which is lambda hyphen webinar similarly if you are creating for alexa you can do those also if you are creating for lambda you can do this also alexa is special thing comes inside lambda because alexa devices if you know the amazon amazon devices which speaks uh, that itself is integrated with lambda okay so alexa shows up over here rest only lambda roles will show up okay so this is basically what you do inside your roles now if you want you can create your own role from here you can create your template if you want that what do you want to do for example you only want want ec2 or you want s3 or you want recognition so amazon has already created certain templates for you but the ideal way what i will tell you to do is to go and create your own existing role because roles you can go and change at any point of time this roles you cannot or go and create a new role from itself in this case it will take you it will create a role like this a dummy role like this and then you can go and change it as you want so i am choosing my own role which is lambda hyphen webinar and i click on create function now a uh, advantage of using node js or python inside my programming language is in this case you see this ide comes in front of you here itself you can go and start writing the code here itself you see i am writing it on the ide now what does not happen with java is this ide won't show up for you you will have to go and upload your code remember this again you will have to go and upload your code inside lambda python or node js you can go and automatically work on it here itself this by the way is also one of the differences between your beanstalk and lambda rakesh beanstalk won't give you the ide lambda gives you the ide one very basic difference but nonetheless it is a difference okay now my only job left is to go and create my lambda function that's it let's get started with that so lambda in progress and let's go to our function now auto start this function will go and start my ec2 instance automatically but if i need to start my ec2 instance i also need to have a ec2 instance first isn't it so for that i will go and just create a simple web server inside ec2 and to prove that it is indeed working or not because just lambda or aws telling me that my web server is responding isn't much in itself right so what i will do is i will go create a web server install apache web server inside it and then we will stop my server i will see my website is not responding we will start my server and we will see website is responding so that's a basic full proof that okay lambda ec2 and everything is working the way it has to so for that what i'll do is first of all i need a static ip address now if you don't get this part as of now it is perfectly fine because this is ec2 okay right now if i try to open this ip 65.0.13.31 i should not see anything obviously because that's a simple ip at the moment next i will go and create my web server so let's take instance launch and let me create a ubuntu 20 on x86 and i'll take a t3a small machine here and anywhere is fine this is fine this is, i'll add a name but, over here t3 micro also should work right yeah yeah anything should work but i don't want to know that in the class it, it stops working means it takes time in booting up so i'm taking a bigger instance that's it okay, okay and because it's a web server so i'm also enabling port number 80 over here so if this all is good and my server is up and running 
Now, next step, I will just go and take my Elastic IP and I will attach it to my server. Why this? Because changing or stopping the server will release the IP address. I don't want that. But again, hold on. That is in EC2. Nothing to do right now. Important thing is my machine, which I have, has the IP address, which will be the same as 65.0.13.31, which is over here. But now still, if I open it and I refresh it, I still don't see anything, isn't it? And the reason for that is I haven't installed only anything inside it, right? So first, let's go and make a connection with that. I will use this, this, and my console. So let's make a connection with it. Yes. Apart from the uh, default user, do we have any root user? Yes, I am the root user only at the moment. If you don't create any, the moment you create your AWS account, you are the root user only. Okay, uh, Rakesh, your question, Uth? That is what we are going to do in this class only, starting or stopping the servers with Lambda. That we will do, automatic we will do, and a time waste we will do, basically. These three things. Like the services uh, in the server. Yes, correct. Oh, okay, that part, oh no, that part can't be done. For that, you will have to create your own SDKs for that, which will be listening on that event. That we will do inside my DevOps class, actually, if you are there. Okay. Okay. creating our own own customized pipelines basically your own pipelines you create where you can go and start or stop a service based on certain conditions inside that particular server okay Good. fine so let's go back and if i do this while i was talking what i have done is i have gone and created my web server over here now just one thing uh, because how do we know that this is my server only right so what i will do is let's make a connection with this machine again and let's change a few things inside this web server okay stopping and starting of uh, ec2 will change the public ip address right correct then that is why i use the elastic ip if you see okay got it yeah so uh, over here if on the top if you see it says apache to ubuntu default page right this title over here says so uh, what i'll do is i'll go and change this over here again if you don't understand this perfectly fine more about it inside our devops class we will do but i want to show you that okay indeed it is working so let's call it what lambda webinar or lambda hyphen web and save it this and this and everything is good if everything is good now if i just go and refresh my page have a look over here this will change to lambda hyphen web so now our whole class henceforth will be worried about this server only starting it stopping it automatically starting automatically stopping and basically timed activities something like start it at 8 a.m every day stop it at 6 p.m every day or maybe reboot it every eight hours something like that okay now our whole class is worried about this ip alone so let's note it down also okay uh, to yes. work on that so instead of using uh, on the static ip address we can use dns name right you can use dns name also indeed but then the dns name is also dependent on the ip address only so have a look here this part here and over here you see this dns name is nothing but ip address only 65.13.13. Hi, Ankit. Sorry, I just joined late. Just you mm -hmm. created a web server with an Ubuntu test page, all right? Correct. And I will and be adding it with Lambda now. Okay, okay. Cool. Now, Even so, though it can communicate, right? The IP address got changed also. It can communicate, right? If it is oh, over the private IP. Yeah, yeah, private. Correct, correct. Or I believe you understand this then, uh, you are well ahead of everyone. So basically VPC, if we go and modify our DNS name, basically we add it to our forest or Azure Active Directory or Active Directory in short. In that case, changing the IP address won't affect anything or the DNS name remains the same. Okay, if you are thinking in that regards, yes, IP address doesn't matter. Anything less than that, then yes, either the private IP or elastic IP. 
Okay. Now that our web server is done, important thing is also to note down the instance ID because when I say start or stop the server, which server? How will AWS know? Answer is instance ID itself. So if we are good till here, let's get with the Lambda part now. Okay. My first job will be to go and create a program which will automatically go and start the server. Or let's say it will automatically start the server. Or finally, it will go and do it on a timed based activity. Three things. First program, I will go and create to start the particular server. But to create that server, yes, Farid? Uh, no, no, nothing else. Okay. Uh, so you're just going to write the logic now. Yes. Right? Correct, For the correct. starting the... Exactly. SDK is now. Yes. So now we will write the program to automatically start the instance. Before I start the instance, certain basic things before that. Now, Lambda, you see, if you have to create the Lambda function for anything, you have to work on the SDKs. SDKs are nothing but the software development kit. In short, you have to access any service inside AWS. You have to go and access any server of AWS, service of AWS, resource of AWS. How do you do? First method is from the console that you see over here, this part. Remember these four terms. First is the console here. Second is the CLI, or now AWS has something known as a cloud shell. Pretty new, but it is also there. Second. Third is via CLI. When you go and program, program it or open your terminal and you do it. Fourth is via our REST APIs. Fifth is using any external tools like Terraform, Chef, Puppet, Ansible, and so on. Or nowadays people are using, even using Docker and Kubernetes to access AWS services. You can do that too. So any of these services, we right now are focused more on our serverless or Lambda. So we will be writing the script and script, how will AWS understand why some programming language? Which programming language? We had already understood that, right? Node.js. So what I need is I need the SDK for AWS to understand. And SDK inside AWS, first of all. And what SDK do I need? I need to send the notifications, right? What is notification service known as? SNS, right? So I will just go and type SNS. Googling itself will give you the first result on the top. So if you click over there, next step that you will get is you will get all of this thing. And this basically has list of all the things that you will ever need inside SNS. One thing, there is a probability that SNS itself has only eight features and my SDK might have 20 features. SDK will always have more resources or functionalities as compared to either your console or your Terraform tools like Terraform or your CLI. SDK is the topmost thing. It will always have the maximum number of results. Okay. So inside my SDK, I will go and what I have to do, I have to send a notification, right? Now, once you are in the normal course, you will understand for now, just trust me when I say that SDK or the function name is publish. Just have to go and copy paste this as it is done. Nothing else to do. Okay. But let's not go ahead of ourselves. First thing, let's understand how to write a basic program. For that, I have already told you that you will go to, uh, okay, let's start from the beginning again. Uh, just go and open Google over here. Just go, go and open the name of the repository over here. It is and alike, my own repository, click there. Self-explanatory, click there, go to repositories and go to Lambda. Here, and if you go down, I have already mentioned it. Look out for program named as sample program.js. So either you can go and click over here or simply click here. And it will give you the base program like this. Just go and copy and paste it as it is. Nothing else you will change over here. This thing you are not going to change. So what happens here is 
where AWS equals to require AWS SDK. Like in Java, you use import, same in Python, in C, C++, you use hash include iostream.h or conio.h, whatever it is, you use that. Similarly, inside Node.js, we use require keyword. So I'm just saying that C, AWS, you will be requiring something known as SDK. And all of this basically lands up inside the variable named as AWS. Second thing, this Lambda program is a region-based thing, right? Mumbai, you have to select a region where it works. So for that reason, I am saying AWS, your region is set to this. My region is Mumbai, so I will take AP-South-1. Okay, next, this line you can ignore. This we are going to do now followed by a basic function that you write and whatever function name is over here, it has to go over here. If you are interested in knowing why to do this, the reason is this Lambda function itself has to be used by AWS. So for that reason, this Lambda function has to be exported out of AWS. This is Node.js way of saying that this function can be exported out of AWS, that's it. So basically, this is how your function will look like. This function name becomes the first function name. After that, you can go and write whatever you want. So basically, if we have to go back, I just have to do this copy over here. And I paste it over here. And in the last line, where are you? in the last line, I just have to give this module.export.handler over here. And this is in turn referring to this function name. No, What was the initial function for me that I created? Init function. So what I will do is I will just go and put init function over here. That's it. That's a program for me. First, I say I will be requiring AWS SDK. Second, I tell AWS that I will be working on the region AP South 1. Then I say that, see, first of all, you will have to go and work on the init Sorry, function. Sorry, can you repeat that uh, from last minute, what you said? Perfect. From the beginning. Fine. from let's, last one minute here yeah. let's remove everything and then let's start again so let's remove this all and this program i believe till here we were good right yes yes this basic thing we were good fine okay so what i said was that go to google go to andalai go to lambda node and just copy this basic structure of your program okay so just go and copy it as it is over here okay fine thank you uh, next is remove this part over here and this where AWS equal to require AWS SDK. Why Lambda is working on AWS SDK. So for that, we will need to go and tell AWS that I will be requiring this particular package. The beauty of using Node.js is you don't have to go and export everything. Lambda will automatically understand that it is Node.js, it needs this package. Same thing will not happen in Java, will not happen in Ruby, will not happen in .NET. There you have to go and export the packages yourself. Yes, Farid. We have to import the package in the case of Python, right? Correct. In Python, that, that depends. If it is Python 3, you don't. Python 2, you have. Okay. Okay, so over here, in case of Node.js, any language you don't have to worry aws will automatically take care of it okay so i am saying that see i will be requiring aws sdk and then i will also have to tell the region where this is supposed to work so my region is ap south one right so i give something like ap south hyphen one and then i create a basic function over here any function so let's call it uh, anything okay and the same thing i will also have to give it over here so if you are understanding it from the beginning, just remember that you have to write these four lines of code. That's it always. If you want to deep dive into it, why it is like this? The reason is this Lambda function will be used by somewhere outside. So how do you export that function to be used by AWS? You export it. And what do you export? This function, what function? This anything function. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can we add multiple regions here? You can. Okay. So in that case, what you will do is because you are adding AWS, you will have to change the variable name. You can do. But in reality, we do that actually, but we find it easier creating multiple Lambda functions with multiple regions. And if you remember, Lambda can call another Lambda function also. No, So that way it is easier because you are working on the 
code you understand next person who tries to debug it or fix it might not understand that though there nothing stops you from adding roles or regions over there okay with respect to java how it will be uh, assigning the regions and same that? thing same thing same it remains the same okay but let me show you what we want sns right mm. this one i believe you understand maven right yes cool so if you are inside maven then if you go inside any of the package it will tell you what you have to do and all the code is written over here why node js and why not java you will understand it once you start see have a look at it here itself pretty complicated no same thing inside my this part here is so easy that is why we prefer working on node js honestly uh, okay. people will ask why do you use it why node js not java tell them this thing as it is okay cool so over here going back i have to give this function someone had asked a yeah, question yeah. that you wanted to repeat yes yeah ankit i mean uh, till now what we did now just uh, in python just we import boto3 like the same way we uh, we are doing that require aws exactly SDK. exactly as it is okay okay as it is though in devops i will be telling you the same thing in python also but here i am telling you notes yes that's it okay okay fine so this is my basic function that i need to create and actually if you see i have to do nothing copy this whole thing and paste it over here done that is my program that's it now what i did was instead of copying it from here to here i had done the other way around i copied this thing over here so maybe that is why we got confused but at the end of the day it's like this so someone had asked this question is it understood now okay i'll take that for a yes then okay so this function anything that i wrote no why not make it something better i already have a initial function no init function what i will tell aws is that aws go and import this function init function now what will happen init function will call initial function based on certain conditions initial functions will call start instance based on certain conditions start instance will either call success notification or it will call error notification based on certain conditions okay what those conditions are is what we are going to do in short what happens is this calls a function which in turn will call a function which in turn will call a function which in turn will call any of the functions over here rajesh you had certain questions if nothing then let's proceed now our only job left is to go and create my functions and write the code inside it that's it okay let's leave this for now this for now this for now and that's it okay first that i have to do is init function will anyhow be calling initial function no so what i will do is i will just write a note for myself console dot log initiated with function and i give the name of the function which is init function and this is for my own logging purpose and i am also calling the function named as initial notification done so what will happen is first it will go here it will go here it will go and call init function which will call this which will write this in the log uh, this for java people is sop for uh, python uh, people is print for c c++ is uh, your c out or printf this is what we call as console.log over here and which in turn will call our initial notification which will start doing the job that we want to do what will initial notification do by the way send notifications right how go and search for that proper thing sns copy it and paste it over here done that's it it will automatically do everything now over here what i want to send the message and message attributes the duplication id group id structure phone number if i want to send i can add that not required so i'll remove it target arn is if i have to send to a specific person that i don't need so actually i am left with only three things message the subject and the topic arn now before i go over here just have a look at this one first i can write something as simple program a equals to 10 b equals to 10 i say if a is greater than i am assuming this language is not python okay because python has indentation so i am saying console.log a is greater and 
okay let's make it print only a is greater and then i say print b is greater okay so what will happen over here is a equal to 10 okay let's make it 100 actually a is greater than b no so it basically lands up inside else where it says b is greater okay if a becomes 100 over here and b becomes 10 over here 100 is more than 10 it prints a is greater why did i tell this because this is one way of writing where you put the opening bracket and the closing bracket some smart people said why do you add the brackets over here why don't you remove it it simply means the line after it means else by that same logic the line after it means if so if you see something like this no just remember that the line after it is if block and line after this is else block that's it though again i will say doing this actually looks better because you have greater control on the code if you are having the opening bracket and the closing bracket okay why did i tell this you will understand it in next 20 seconds so remember this if i put if and else the line after it is else if and the line after this is else why did i see this let's go back to our program do you see you have if and you don't have any opening bracket and closing bracket it means this statement is if you see after else you don't have any opening bracket and closing bracket which means this means else so what it means is you could have understood it like this also after if you put an opening bracket and a closing bracket and after else also you put an opening bracket and a closing bracket nothing much just it makes this look easier for us that's it fine now going back to my function of initial notification i have to give a message i have to give a subject and i have to give the topic arn you have to send the notification to someone right some group right some topic right which topic you have to do that by sending it on the arn those who were on the weekday class on friday might understand it very easily let's go back to our sns and this part here i just need the topic arn those who were not in the week weekday class fine have a look at it now though what it exactly means i can't tell you in interest of time but for now at least i can show you what a arn will actually be like arn stands for amazon the source name anything inside aws will always have a arn my arn was lambda webinar 2021 no this part here copy this as it is copy and paste it over there like this okay now this depends on you you can say why do i put single quote and not double quote you are free to do that also though i prefer single quotes over here okay next part uh, so my way of writing it is if i have to declare anything i put it inside single quotes if i have to log anything i put it inside double quotes though it depends on you how you want to do it next is the subject this subject is nothing but the email that was sent to you okay so in this case assuming this function has been triggered if this function is triggered it means my instance has actually stopped which means i will send that message and that's error so let me give a code error 101 instance stopped this will come up on the email subject next is my value i will say hi instance has stopped aws lambda will try to auto start the instance okay now why do i put a subject over here and message is big because in reality no once you get an email if you are checking email on your phone the subject will show up no until you click on the mail so what we do is we decide the error messages ourselves so if i see e101 it means that aws is doing something i don't have to take any action so if you slide down the notifications looking at this message itself you can do elsewise you have to go and open the email each time this thing once you are pretty advanced in this thing you will understand but for now i will get this particular email automatically that aws will start the instance now when i am sending the messages either two things will happen either the message will go or the message will not go either delivered or not delivered 
If it is not delivered, it is an error in which case I can't do anything. Notification itself hasn't gone. What can I do? If the message was successful and was delivered, it will call my next function, which is a start instance. Okay, so again, pay attention. It calls my this function, init function, which in turn calls my initial functions, which in turn will go and send the notification, which will either fail in which case I won't do anything or it will pass in which case it will call start instance. Now my next job is to create the function to start the instance. How to do that? Let's go back. AWS EC2 and SDK. Here, this part. And I will go and search for the function which says start instance. One advice, if you open the EC2 SDK of AWS, this consists of many resources actually. So it will take quite some time in loading. Okay, so let it take, we will come back to that. But before that, why not create the function for success notification and error notification? No, so assuming this start instance was successful, everything was good, my instance had successfully started. In that case, what I have to do is send another notification, right? Let me copy it from here and this part over here. And I will just change the message and the subject over here. Yes, Krishna. Okay. Okay, I can't hear you, Krishna. Though. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can type it or you can speak. Let's speak up again. I can't hear you, though. Okay, now success notification, I will just send the message where I will say EC2 was successfully started, the web server is active now. And inside the subject, I will say S101 instance recovered. Yes, Krishna? So if everything is good over here, in that case, okay, I have missed a bracket, is it? Okay. So it will go over here and it will publish that everything is successful. Assuming that it failed, my instance didn't start. In that case, I will send the error notification. EC2 not recovered. intervention required no instance id how it can capture i'm coming i'm coming i'm coming to that i haven't started no that start instance so subject over here i will give e101 error 101 instance recovery failed and i will send it over here so right now i don't know how this thing is but i do know that I will either send an error notification or I will send a success notification. Based on what? Based on whether my instance was successfully started or not. And how will that happen? For that, let's go down to start instances. So I'm inside AWS EC2 for SDK and I will go down and I will go to my start so I have my start instances over here and my simple job is to go copy this and paste it inside my function over here. That's it. Anything which is commented out can be removed. And if you have been following me, we understand that after a, if I give a opening bracket and a close bracket, and after else I give a opening bracket and a closing bracket so that it becomes easy for us. Now, interesting things. First of all, which instance is it? For that, I will have to go to my EC2 and I get the instance ID from here. This is my instance actually, okay? So what will happen? It will try to start the instance and which instance, this instance. By the way, what if you have multiple instances, you can go and give all of them over here. Just put a comma. This is nothing but an array of strings. Python people, it's a set. Uh, Java, C, C++ people, it's an array of strings. Okay, so in that case, you can go and give the instance ID over here. 
and what will it will do is it will go and start the instance if it errors out means the instance did not start in that case it will go and call this error notification and what will error notification do it will go and tell that my instance had failed and human intervention is required if it was successful in that case it will call success notification which in turn will go and tell that my instance was successfully started this is how you go and write your basic lambda function here and this now if you look at it if from the beginning this actually might look pretty difficult but if you have been following we just went and created a basic skeleton and based on that it happened but then again first of all let's go and run it to see if it is actually working also or not for that i will just go and paste it over here Achha, one thing i missed out actually my bad uh, how do you know that this is sns or ec2 so one thing that we missed out was in the very beginning you also have to go and tell aws that see aws you will need to work on ec2 so for that reason i give this also and by that same logic i will give the same for sns also so this will actually become like this where aws equals to require aws sdk the region that i am working on is ap south one i will be working on ec2 that is why it told me ec2 i will be working on sns that is why i told sns i told sns and i told sns here okay now if everything is good let's go back to our lambda function here and paste it if everything is good over here in that case you can click on deploy and we can test it out but how to prove that it is working so for that i had my this web server me coming up let me first go and stop the server let it stop now once my web server is stopped this also won't show up over here okay this will start to uh, one uh, yeah, one quick question like you mentioned right start and stop uh, code that you took from sdk aws sdk right console. right right yeah see that code is similar for all the programs right it seems exactly. like python uh yes yes almost same only the scripting style will change or the programming style will change just is same sdks are same only anyway. but in console it didn't show that you know it's node js or like anything right oh no no because here you see you know it says aws javascript sdk this part okay 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 right okay so that is why it took only that or else it would have shown you another one like python or something like that there we he used boto and boto 3 Okay. Any on DevOps, I will be telling you deep dive. We will do into DevOps is more into Python now. So AWS, Node.js, DevOps, all Python only. Boto, Boto three. Okay. Cool. Now, if this is actually stopped, and if I go and try to let's open it here, so it won't show you anything. Why? Because the server itself has stopped, right? Now, if my Lambda program is all good, it should automatically go and start my server, isn't it? right now it says stopped it should automatically go and start my server for that i click on test over here i call it as test one and i click on create if everything is good it should go start my instance my execution result will show up over here and my lambda function will start now by the way if everything is good you should have also received particular emails telling that the instance was started or stopped or successful by the way if everything was good if i go over here and i refresh it i should also see my instance automatically running which also means this was not working then but it automatically started now which means my lambda function automatically have started my servers or lambda has automatically invoked my ec2 instance what i mean by email is something like this i will get something like this e101 instance stopped which i got it at 1221 a minute back and then over here s101 instance recovered so just by looking at the subject itself no you will see e101 straight away you will see s101 you will know okay something happened and aws automatically recovered it also so e101 s 101 so the sequence of flow that happened was it called this which sent me a notification which was e101 
then it went inside start instance which went over here which tried to start the instance which was successful so it had sent me success notification or s101 that is also what i see over here e101 s101 fine so this is how you go and create your lambda functions now this thing is good but each time i have to go and trigger my lambda functions manually right no let's go to the next part events bridge events bridge basically is a service of aws which listens for events what are a event starting an instance is a event stopping an instance is a event rebooting is a in event terminating is a event which means if my instance stops which is a event my events bridge can automatically go and catch that and how will you do that for that we will have to go and create something inside my events bridge now this lambda is no longer required honestly okay uh, by the way it was this event was earlier available inside my cloud watch this was known as events so in case someone who works on aws or in the interviews they ask you about cloud watch events just tell them that events was the name which was for it earlier now this is a new service itself which is named as events bridge so what we'll do is we'll go and create a rule but you can't do anything as of now here you anyhow will have to go to event bridge services inside aws where we will go and create a rule which rule if someone goes and stops my instance or if my instance is stopped automatically so click on create rule let's say auto start ec2 and i will say auto start the instance based on a event which event which is predefined who is giving aws which service ec2 and what inside ec2 if something happens to my instance state change notification and what happens if my instance stops and which instance now you can give multiple over here also which instance i am giving my specific instance id which was this here so yeah ankit yeah, the what if we have na multiple uh, come in, come in, like... come, in, come in. i got it got it so for that we will go to cloud watch actually not here right now let's go for the basic one so we created a event over here by the way it can be any instance and you can trigger the event based on your conditions also this if you were in s3 class you might understand we can create specific events for specific buckets any one of you remembers that the same same question that was asked i could have created my event for my specific bucket also which would have triggered my specific lambda function or my specific event bridge there also you could have done but anyhow once we are inside lambda we deep dive into it we'll understand it more so this specific instance and what will this instance do if this happens it will go and call my lambda function so where is lambda this and which lambda function uh, what was the name of lambda now you will have to go in sorry lambda hyphen webinar is the Oh, um, what we have there? Oh, okay. lambda function. Lam no, no, lambda function was something else. That was a role. It is either start or this three I have. Okay, let's see anyhow. So based on the created, this one I can understand. Uh, start is it to instance? Fine. So it says what will happen? It will work, but we won't realize that it is working. And we click on create and done. Go and remove. all the other services of aws let aws do its job now instance state is stop if i stop my instance or not me this me this is me triggering that stop no what if i don't stop my instance and aws instance automatically stop no worries events bridge will still do its job if it will automatically go and send the event to events bridge which in turn will call my lambda function which in turn will automatically start my instance so for a very split second if you are lucky enough you will see something has stopped after that it will go into the th pending state 
and it will go into start state. You see, you stop the instance, it automatically will go and send the emails and it will automatically start. In short, this will still be up and running. You can go and stop it and then it will again come up. Now here comes few questions. First of all, this is how you go and create your events. You create your Lambda, you go and merge your Lambda with your events bridge. Now, because the time is up, I can't go for CloudWatch, but I will tell you what additional things can be done with this. First, my company says, create the runtime environment at 8 a.m., finish it at 6 p.m., which means start the instance at 8 p.m., finish it at 6 p.m., which means events will be triggered at 8 a.m. So in this case, you will create two Lambda functions. One will be to start and one will be to stop. And you will automatically call it every day at 8 a.m. to start and call it every day at 6 p.m. to stop. Two things. In this case, two Lambda functions and two CloudWatch events will be triggered. First part. How is that triggered? That is also done via events bridge itself. Okay. Let me show you only. So in this case, you will go and create an event bridge based on some specific conditions. So this thing is inside DevOps or inside normal one, we call it as a cron job. Okay, this one we had done over here. We had event pattern, no, we will do it on a schedule. What is good? Schedule, do it every eight hours or do it every eight days or do it at whatever time you want. This is one way or no, I have something specific. In that case, let me give you an example something like this. So basically what happens is it will go and call the event every day at 20, 30 hours. What was the condition I told at eight hours? No, 8 a.m. you have to do. So just make it 0, 8, 0, 0. So 8 a.m. every day, it will automatically trigger this event. This can be based on GMT or your local time zone. I will say that please work on GMT only because we face this problems a lot of times. Some person will go and make it local time zone. Now, local time zone for them is UK. For the next person is Osaka. For the next person is Alaska. And for me, it is Bangalore. So four places, it becomes very complicated. So everyone now chooses one time only GMT. If you want to do it, you do, do, uh, you do the plus minus in your time zone and you make it yourself. But this should always be GMT only. Okay. So basically what happens every day at 8 a.m., this event will start, which will start the my, my particular event, which in turn will trigger my Lambda, which in turn will start the event or maybe something like this. 1800 hours, it will automatically stop. Okay, so this is how you write a cron job. More about how to write cron jobs that we will do inside our DevOps. Uh, so this is one. And then second, Rakesh, you have asked. So very fast again, I will tell you this one. What if it goes above CPU utilization? No, okay. Good question. Actually, this can be done in two ways, multiple ways, but two, I will show you up front. In this case, what you do, Rakesh, is you create something known as an alarm. Alarm will be created for 90%. Okay, so whichever opens up first, I will show you that. EC2 versus CloudWatch. Okay, this opened up first. No worries. Here, monitoring. If you anyhow go inside this one, Give it B A F F two no fine here only I'll show you here metric uh, what was your metric CPU utilization no okay so E C two per instance and my instance was ending in B A F F two and you said my CPU utilization and then you said whenever it goes above 90%, isn't it? Whenever it goes above 90, fine. In that case, what you want to do, you want to go and either send the notification or in this case, you can use this or in this case, you can do this existing topic or let's say existing topic. And first of all, let me send 
lambda webinar and what will it do it will go and trigger this action in that case what do you want to do you want to go and reboot the instance no? this you can do one also if you have auto scaling group you can go and do that also so this is one way of doing it you can go and do it inside cloud one in this case lambda is not required but yes because the question was you want to go and change the type Achha, it was type changing the type okay fine in this case what you will do uh, if you recollect sns can also trigger a lambda function right sns was a topic lambda function becomes the end point yes. lambda function will go and automatically first stop the instance and then change the instance type lambda can do that also so whenever it goes above 90 percent choose that topic this topic will take you to lambda lambda will first go and stop and then change the configuration alternatively i'll say use terraform agent or terraform either of the ways you can do okay thank you thank you so that's the way how you can do it this one is interesting actually this one we do and this one you will also tell in the interviews also that how did you do in this case let me make it beautiful uh instead of saying no 90 percent cpu you say i want to make it whenever the ram goes above 90 percent in that case how do you do ram is not available only over here here this have a look it has ebs or volumes it has cpu it has network in out done it doesn't have RAM. In this case, how, how will you make it based on the RAM? RAM is not a metric only over here. In that case, you, you case you will add CloudWatch agent, CloudWatch, go and listen for the agent metrics inside your CloudWatch logs over here. So if your CloudWatch agent is set and CloudWatch logs group is seeing that it is more than 90%, in that case, you can go and do this. One more question was to go and start or stop a service or a specific service. No, I believe Rakesh had asked that. So that one was uh, Rakesh. And, uh, alternatively, you could have gone for application monitoring. In this case, you have a service known as X-Ray inside AWS. Go and monitor that okay. specific log and you can go and start or stop that particular service inside aws also okay uh fine so this was all about my servers about my lambda about how to go and trigger my lambda when get here yeah, exactly the custom metrics but you need the cloud watch agents for it right uh so in this case you can go for your uh lambda function create your own role create your own role if you want you can add sns topic then if you do lambda you can go and add it via events bridge now events bridge is not the only thing but most of it it is used with events bridge and if you have been following cloudwatch can call sns which in turn can call lambda and then you again start from step one so basically cloud watch and event split if you understand and if you understand how lambda function is written one and two or one and three itself can manage your complete infrastructure using lambda in aws fine so uh, how to complicate it as in uh, if you want to go and add for multiple instances like i had a question in that case you will pass something known as a lambda variable or a lambda event Okay, so uh, right now I hard coded the event, but what if one event is is going and managing multiple servers? In this case, you have two options: either you create multiple lambda functions for multiple instances, or you have something as an event or a lambda event that we'll be doing inside a normal class and inside a DevOps. Okay, we have already exceeded the timing, so we'll have to stop over here.